here. It's Angela Ardolino with It's a Dog's Life, and I'm here with my partner, Hernando Amana. Hi there. I'm joining you from New York City today. How's it in New York City? It's a rainy day, but I got a dog fashion show to go to later that I'm very excited about. So, oh, my uh... <laughs> goodness. Oh, my goodness. So are you, is Blanche going? Blanche is going. Blanche is my eight-year-old Shih Tzu. She's six pounds. We're going to put her in a dress, and she's going to strut the runway at some point today. Uh, but I'm mostly going to uh, talk to all these dog owners and educating them about CBD and how I could help. And uh, it's my favorite thing to do. I love educating these pet parents, so I'm very excited. Awesome. Well, on the show today, as you know, we have Dr. Bob Goldstein. Yes. The founder of Earth Animal, and mm -hmm. I am a huge fan of his. I know I keep saying that. He's kind of like my Oprah of holistic, <laughs> holistic that's, pet. That's a big statement. <laughs> <laughs> a big, big, big fan of his. And um, the reason I'm a big fan of his is that he, you know, he integrated holistic medicine um, and Eastern practices into his practice long well, before anybody else did. And now is of course getting into CBD medicine and is a big fan of it and spending most of his time on that. And, um, and yeah, I can't wait to, to talk to him and pick his brain because I could talk to this man for hours. Yeah, I'm really excited because I have to go in and talk to a lot of vets um, who know nothing or are opposed to know anything, um, which is infuriating. Right. But uh, I'm really excited to hear someone who not only is educated, but is open to learn more and more in a holistic way. Um, I, I, I'm going to sit back and listen like I always do, because I just take notes and learn. But I, I want you to ask the tough questions of what um what we always want vets to actually answer us because as you know it's kind of i think illegal for vets to talk about um cbd to their um clients so it's not that, it's not illegal it's, it's just, just the veteran upon. yeah the veterinary associations are like yeah no don't do it um yeah so, but I mean, in Florida, we have several vets that are, are selling uh, CBD medicine and recommending it like crazy. Yeah. Um, in other states, every state's different, unfortunately, so we never know what's, what's happening, but he yeah. is clearly doing it. He's got his own product, um, his own products, and he is, you know, already doing it. And I think what helps us and other people in the in the cannabis world is to be able to say, yes, Dr. Bob Goldstein, who is a mm -hmm. veterinarian for the past 40 years, recommends it. And he just said that he thinks it's the best thing to happen to veterinary medicine. So for those types of statements to be said by such, um, it's it, life changing. It's life changing. So I love that we have him here and that we get to talk to him about it, find out what he's, what we already know. But yeah. how is he going to take it and, and tell other, other veterinarians that this is a very important medicine that needs to be used? Yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped. I actually just myself went to go get my medical marijuana card in New York and spoke to a certified doctor who knew absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I'm really excited to see someone in the medical uh, world who knows everything and uh I, I can't wait to see what you're gonna ask them and uh i'm really excited for all of our listeners to learn um this is the, this is the one to really learn so I, i'm i'm really pumped awesome can't wait i can't wait hi there it's a dog's life with angela ardolino and i'm so excited because i am a huge fan of my guest today it's dr bob goldstein who founded earth animal and i am so excited i've only had a couple times to talk to you before and it was always at an event where i got to pick your brain and take some pictures but i am excited to have you all to myself today to pick your brain and let these people know about hemp medicine that you have been working with for a very long time. You're also such a pioneer in natural remedies and, and integrating veterinary medicine with what's out there, diet. I don't even know where to begin. I think I want to start with how the heck 
I, being in the cannabis industry, one of my biggest things that I struggle with every day is when I do talk to a vet and I ask, start talking to them about CBD medicine and I never know if they're going to be completely against it because they weren't taught anything about it mm -hmm. or if they're going to be open-minded to it. So I want to know, as a vet, how did you make that bridge over to holistic and natural medicines, including hemp medicine? being a vet and trained nothing about it. How did you do that? Well, it goes back a long time. I've been practicing for 40 years. Obviously came out of veterinary school as a conventionally trained uh, veterinarian and practiced for 12 years that way. Um, and I, you know, I would say that probably the light bulb went on uh, at, at some point, and I think it was related to uh, our own animal, Lee, who was crippling up with arthritis and everything that I did medically, surgically, or any other thing that I did uh, would not work. And we were at the point of euthanasia uh, because the pain was so serious. Uh, and at that point, uh, Susan was working with an alternative cancer therapy for people and learned a lot. And then uh, we shared that together, brought it into the practice, and was able to reverse Lee's condition uh, he was seven years old when we did that, uh, and he lived to be 17. So wow. that is when the light bulb went on, and then certainly back in the early 70s, there was not much, well, first of all, there was not an internet, so there was not a lot of data available for, let me just put this down, let me just close this down. There was not a lot of data available for us, for veterinarians, you know, I learned actually on the human side, on the holistic human side. You know, so there was not a lot of data, so it was a lot of trial and error, uh, but we integrated it into my practice uh, and was just really just blown away with the results and not the reliance on medication. And, and what then, was so, it that you integrated in? Well, at that point, now you're talking about the early 70s, you know, we would, uh, basically a health food store was what was available. Amazon wasn't available. Internet wasn't available. The good old days. We were talking about uh, fresh juices, uh, fresh foods for the diet, you know, meat and, and, and fresh fruits and organic vegetables, you know, for the diet. Uh, supplements, you know, vitamins, minerals, uh, uh, herbs, and homeopathic remedies, those were available. And so we were able to integrate that into the practice. And basically what happened to the practice, it became a referral center for holistic uh, veterinary medicine. There was nothing else around. And so we were getting a lot of referrals. And unfortunately, over the number of 20 years that we were doing that, the practice became sort of a cancer-related practice. You know, cancer was epidemic. People had no other choice except chemotherapy. And many, many people just didn't want to do chemotherapy. So we were offering alternatives to that uh, and integrating, as I said, these natural remedies, be it Chinese herbs, uh, Western herbs, homeopathics, uh, nutrition, vitamins, minerals, uh, fasting, fresh juices, that type of thing. CBD, by the way, was not in the, in the early 80s, was, was available research-wise, but it was nothing like that for veterinary medicine. Were you using hemp seed oil or industrialized hemp or anything like that back in those times? The only area of hemp that I was involved in was using the hemp oil as a fatty acid source. You know, hemp oil is very rich in the essential fatty acids. So on many of these patients that I felt needed fatty acids, uh, we would add hemp oil, but nothing related to CBD, nothing related to the medicinal effects of cannabinoids at all. Right, so when you say hemp oil, you mean hemp seed oil? Hemp seed oil, right. the only one that I was using just as the rich source of the essential fatty acids. Yep, we include that in our tinctures too because it's such a wonderful additive. So what do you think about, let's fast forward to today. And well, let's, let's back up a little bit because how long have you been working on your um, CBD rich medicine. I know you just launched it at Global. Uh, yes, we launched it at Global. It's been about a two-year process. Uh, you know, obviously on the veterinary side, it's very hush-hush. Right. It's really not legal for veterinarians to be involved with CBD. 
So it's sort of a self-learning process. Uh, we have tested our products in veterinary hospitals privately for the last year, a year, year and a half, just to make sure that the efficacy of the products that we were using was there. You know, I would say that in my experience of 40 years practicing uh, veterinary medicine, I would put the CBD, the benefits of CBD, the potential benefits of CBD way at the top. I have, in my experience, not seen many natural substances produce the results that CBD is producing in the animals that we are testing on. Amazing. I'm so happy to hear that from someone like you. Of course, I'm not a vet. I've just worked with animals my entire life, and I, um, I discovered the CBD medicine for myself, and when it changed my life, I threw myself into the industry, got a degree in medical cannabis, and found out that animals had the same system. So that's how I ended up where I am. So it's so nice to hear that from you because it is so hush-hush, and vets can't even say, yes, I think it's a good alternative. Or if they do, they're saying it without, you know, I didn't say it. Um, which is funny because I don't know if you've heard already, California is uh, passing a bill for um, allowing vets to recommend um, CBD medicine now. Yes, I, I'm, I'm well aware of it. Now, we're in Connecticut, and it is just a, a light years a, away from where that is. And we've had a number of veterinarians who have been, not only they've taken CBD out of the clinic, but they've threatened their drug license. Uh, you yeah. know, with the fact if they're doing that. So right now it's in flux. I think that the eventuality will, it, it's going in the right direction. There's going to be a lot of bumps along the road, but I think it is going in the right direction. And I think the end result, especially with the research that is being done at the veterinary schools, I think that the end result will be very beneficial for dogs and cats that are suffering from these chronic conditions. What do you think is the, the biggest hurdle we have to get over right now in this industry um, to get this medicine out there? I know, you know, in the human side, we're battling the big, big pharma, and we know big pharma exists in the pet industry. Sure does. So are we going to have the same problems? Will we be able to sneak in a little bit because so little is regulated in the pet industry? I think we have the ability to sneak in because the studies that are being done at the veterinary school, which produces the evidence base that veterinarians need, uh, is really going to allow veterinarians to say, you know what, it's proven at a university in a clinical trial, it's going to be good for my practice, I can help animals with this, and I think we'll be able to skirt some of the major issues that the human side is dealing with. The other thing I've noticed with this California bill, I've been, you know, hounded with questions from people, and the biggest confusion that I'm finding right now is the definition of the words. So even a bill is being written using the word marijuana, right. which we all know is not the, the correct term for it, and neither is hemp. So uh, every time someone says, oh my gosh, what do you think, and we appear later on a webinar together, which we will be asked this question, what do you think about this bill and about vets prescribing or recommending medical marijuana? And so I get asked that question, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're thinking that they're giving them medical human marijuana, cannabis, and that we're going to get dogs high. It just, which is what the real question is. So I'm constantly battling with educating people of what the right words are, what the difference is, and there really is no difference. It's one plant, and it either has a whole bunch of T THC in it or a whole bunch of CBD or a nice uh, balance in between. So how the heck do we battle this when they're not even using the right terminology and everyone is confused? Everyone thinks it's the same thing. They're going to get high. Their pets are going to get high. How are you battling that? Well, and obviously very controversial right now. And certainly, you know, the high THC level in marijuana, you know, really doesn't exist at that high level in the CBD area. And obviously you need to have that less than 0.3%, you know, in order to, you know, in order to have it. But six. California is in its own world. 
and they are totally yeah. in their own world. <laughs> what we have done, and maybe that's this specific for Earth Animal, what we have done, we are members of the National Animal Supplement Council. And the National Animal Su Supplement Council is sort of the FDA for the animal part, and they work very closely with the FDA. And their national convention was actually just two weeks ago in Florida. Mm -hmm. And they have come out, or they're in the process of coming out with new guidelines, very specifically defining what you can and cannot say. And so I think that my advice to any body or any company that is going to be in the CBD area, to, if you can follow the guidelines of the NASC, which will put some guidelines around what you can and cannot say, and most importantly, tell the truth about what is being said, I think that if everybody did that, I think it'll really be, be, begin to standardize what people say. The misinformation out there, as a veterinarian, I'm asked 50 times a day, what about this? The misinformation that people are getting from the internet is mind boggling. I know. So I think that what, in, in our case, we chose to go with the NASC, the National Animal Supplement Council. And I think that the more people that do that and standardize it, the better it's going to be, not only for the industry, the better it's going to be for the animals. Wonderful. I love that. That's, a, that's an amazing thing. Where do you see the future of cannabis medicine for pets going? I think, a great question. I think the over-the-counter area where you're in and we're in right now, you know, you can't make a claim that you're treating cancer. You can't make a claim that you're treating anything. But the benefits on the nervous system, the calming of the nervous system, the benefits on, on really reducing inflammation in the body, and the, and the benefits on the brain and the nervous system primarily is really, really good over-the-counter. I think the future, where I see the future, is that there's so many cannabinoids in that plant that we don't even know about. And I think the more we do research on those individual, you know, CBN, CBD, C, all of them, the more we do research on it, I think we're going to find certain uh, compounds in that plant which could be specific for certain diseases. I feel that that is, is first of all, very exciting for me. Because if we can get specific cannabinoids that are specific for a disease like cancer, which is obviously killing many, many animals, that to me would be incredible. I think that's where the research will eventually bring us. So how do you, de how do you answer the question of THC in pets? You know, let's pretend, yeah, yeah okay, let's unfortunately, pretend. Unfortunately, I have, in my 40 years of practice, I have treated many marijuana poisonings in animals. These are animals that broke in to a stash in somebody's apartment and ate that and got very sick. They didn't die, but they got very, very sick from now, it. Now, they ate the raw form, meaning they the flower? The form. They so they had just, THCA. Yeah, yeah right. Before they, before they smoked, the person smoked it, these animals broke in. And so I've treated a number of those. They get very sick, very, yeah. very sick. They get very high and they get very, very sick. So, you know, that... The question was, how do I, how do I, could this repeat the question on how, and I want to make sure I, I, I give you the right answer. The, so you have treated dogs that have eaten the raw form. They're not going to die. Right. So let's but say, for instance. They get very sick. They get very of course, sick. Of yeah. course. If too much of anything is a bad thing. Right. Um, in California, there are products that are on the shelves for pets that are a one-to-one -one ratio of CBD and THC. So I know that if they give that to their dog, their dog is going to get high. And I have seen dogs high. Now that is a oil, right. meaning it is THC. It's not THCA, which is THC is so much more dangerous and gets them really high. So, um, you know, I'm amazed that this product exists and that people are buying it and I'm hoping they don't think it's CBD because, of course, they're going to see their dog high. And, you know, what, how do you, what do you think about THC? Let's pretend that it's completely federally legal. Let's pretend there's no limit on the point three. You know, I mean, just non-medically, you know, the side effects of THC and the hallucinogenic properties 
just has no place in veterinary medicine. It just doesn't. I agree. So whether or not THC is, you know, contributes to the entourage effect, contributes to the, to the synergistic effect, to me, it doesn't matter. I just, just don't use it. Just don't use it. The, the CBD and all the other cannabinoids that do not have the potential hallucinogenic side effects that THC does, there's so many of them, and the benefits are so good, don't even use it. So I am I totally against marijuana. I am totally against the high levels of THC. If it's one-to-one, -to, -one, to me, that's an absurdity. I, I think so, too. Do that. I, I, I couldn't believe it. And no. that's what's happening in California. And that's what's, you know, California, it's been legal for 20 years medically. Yeah. You know, one, of, one of the first things I discovered when I got into the cannabis industry and went to California, because of course, where do you go? You go to California. Right. And at that time, this is in 2016, at that time, for 20 years, mar medical marijuana was legal and recreational had just become legal. Recreational marijuana had to be tested but medical didn't isn't that i mean it's totally absurd yeah. that is absurd as you know i'm dealing with in the veterinary field it is right now in most states it is illegal for a veterinarian to even talk about cbd i mean to me that is so preposterous but that's the way it is so i think i i put that in the category of it's preposterous i mean it doesn't make sense to me i think the direction is going in the right direction as I said, there's going to be bumps in the road. I look at that as one of the bumps. I do not believe in the use of marijuana for animals. I believe in the use of cannabinoids like CBD for the, for the medical and for the preventive use in animals. And by marijuana, you mean THC? Well, a plant that has high levels of THC, THC which right. I do not believe are acceptable for the animal. I don't either. Good. I love it. Um, Okay, Maurice, are we probably probably have to take a break? I haven't taken a break. I'm just getting so amazingly into this conversation with you. I could talk to you all day. I actually get to talk with you all day, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, George, we need to go to a commercial. Well, I was hoping to try to get that a few minutes ago, but um, let's go ahead and uh, let's just finish up. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and uh, go to the first segment. So let's go and wrap up here. For, thanks. Okay, thanks. All right, let me think here. What I would love to ask you um, next is uh, what is the future for you and Earth Animal? I mean, I know Earth Animal has launched this new CBD medicine. I know you're working on your dog food, and I was really excited to hear about a vegan version of your dog food. Um, just tell me, like, are you ever going to retire? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Good. Although, and, and what are you what are you working on next? Like, what is your your next exciting project? And I would love, you know, where where would you? What kind of advice would you give someone like me, who is a a new uh, entrepreneur in the holistic pet world? Well, the you know, first of all, the holistic pet world has come a long way. You know, we founded the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association in 1982. And, and obviously at that point, it was, very, it was looked on very poorly. Now it is really a real organization and there's a lot of good research that is going on on alternative medicine, integrative medicine and natural things. So I think the, the, the industry of the holistic approach to animal care is incredible. So there's so many opportunities there from at my stage of life and, and as I'm winding down in daily practice, the two areas that I am focused on is one in the CBD area, we've already launched the CBD over the counter in, in you know, a transdermal form, we have a transmucosal form. We have, we're trying to get user-friendly methods to give it to the animal so the animal gets the benefit. That's already in process. My research in the CBD area is going to be on the veterinary side where right. we're finding individual cannabinoids that could be beneficial for specific conditions like cancer, like liver disease, like heart disease. So that's where I'd like to do it. We have just hired a veterinarian and we're going to create a veterinary division of Earth Animal. And I think that the research is going to be maintaining over-the-counter use of CBD for prevention in, in where they can purchase in pet stores, 
and then also the research would be focused on the veterinary application. And I think veterinarians, if it's proven and veterinarians are behind it, it's going to really help more animals than if they're not. So that's my, that's one area. And the second area, which is Susan and my, probably our favorite, is that we are working on the development of a vegan dog and cat food. And now when I say vegan, it's not that's not like a niche. What we're trying to do is we are between the new technology of cultured protein, like Impossible Burger. Impossible Burger is a plant-based protein that just tastes just like a burger. Yeah, or Beyond it, Meat. Beyond it, Meat, I think, is the big exactly, one right now. Right. So if, if we could take those kind of proteins, either plant-based or what's called fermented or, or cultured, and we can duplicate the protein of an animal's of muscle meat, of a cow, of a chicken, and we can feed that to dogs and cats and they thrive, and we can eliminate the necessity for killing animals for food. I think that we do, one, a benefit for the animals that are suffering in these, in these big, you know, uh, stock Factory farms, right. you know, and, you know, factory farm type of thing, and that is really obviously very big, and the, and the positive impact of that on the planet is equally as important. So you, you help animals, take away a lot of suffering, and help the planet by reducing the need to cut down trees, to water these animals, the feces. Well, the, biggest, the, the biggest contributor to our problem is, the, is factory farming Absolutely. to our environment. So we Totally agree. So those are the two areas that I'm working on. Very excited about the plant-based cultured meat, dog and cat food. And we're doing research to get that done for a cat who's a true obligate carnivore. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult, but we're almost there. And I'm wow. very excited about that. And then the use of marijuana, uh, sorry, you got me <laughs> saying it. The use of CBD derivatives in a condition specific environment. Those are the two areas that I'm going to focus on. And I'm probably not going to retire. I love you, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I learned so much and I'm such a big fan. Keep up the amazing work. Okay. And you are too. So we're very pleased with what you're doing. You're thank getting you. the word out there. So thank you very much. The animals, thank you very much also. Oh, thank you, Dr. Bob. You're the best. Okay. Good to see you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that was amazing. What do you think, Hernando? Did you learn anything? Uh, I learned a lot. I mean, I just, I kind of have faith in humanity a little bit after that. Oh, good. Um, good. I feel the same way. We want to thank Dr. Bob Goldstein again for coming on the show and enlightening, enlightening us. And um, if you want to check him out, he's at earthanimal.com. Um, and his story, his information, and his amazing products are there. And we are excited about bringing even more amazing vets to the show so that we can pick their brain and learn more about cannabis medicine. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you for joining us here on It's a Dog's Life uh, with Angela Artelino. You can follow me at my website at AngelaArtelino.com. You can also look me up on CBDDogHealth.com. And you can download past episodes of our program by going to CannabisRadio.com or subscri subscribing to the, let me do it again. Thank you for joining us here on It's a Dog's Life with Angela Artelino. You can follow me on AngelaArtelino.com or CBDDogHealth.com. You can also download past episodes of our program by going to CannabisRadio.com or subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, and on iHeartRadio. 